WEMP, WEMP HD1 New York. 1019 FM News. 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 What will the TSA think of next? One woman says agents refuse to let her travel with her insulin. Plus, American Idol is moving from a singing competition to a salary competition. It's hot out there, 87 degrees, partly cloudy now, but there is a chance of rain later, so keep that umbrella handy just in case. Always better to be prepared. Your 1019 FM new weather track forecast is just ahead. The Dow may have dropped 600 points today, but President Barack Obama says the U.S. always is and always has been a AAA country despite its rating agency downgrade. He said the U.S. didn't need a rating agency to say that its political system was having trouble. Obama spoke today at the White House on the Standard & Poor's downgrade. He renewed a plea to Congress to take action next month to help create jobs and cushion Americans from a still weak economy. Obama said financial markets around the world still believe our credit is AAA. The president says the move by the S&P to downgrade the U.S. doesn't change his belief that America is and always has been a AAA country. Obama said today he believes in our country and our people. The reason I am so hopeful about our future, the reason I have faith in these United States of America is because of the American people. Once again, the Transportation Security Administration goes too far. Now the TSA is apologizing to a diabetic pregnant woman after they confiscated her insulin at Denver in International Airport. I'm Honestly, this is ridiculous. The woman says she had a doctor's note and that the insulin was labeled properly. She said that TSA allowed her through with a bottle of nail polish, hairspray, and her needles. All agents told her was that the insulin was a risk for explosives. She asked for names of the agents, and then they scattered, and she says she was left there crying at the checkpoint. Now, she was able to sneak a small amount through and then had to have her insulin delivered to her in Denver. The TSA apologized and says its agents never touched the insulin. Seriously? Next, the TSA is going to say, I have to leave my Tylenol behind. 1019 F FM New Time is 332. Do your kids spend half their life online or on video games? It could be doing all kinds of damage to their mental and physical health. 1019 FM new reporter Michelle Marillo. A Cal State study has been following kids and their Facebook and video gaming habits, and it found that those who spend a lot of time online and on games are suffering for it. Socially, psychologist Larry Rosen says they tend to be narcissists online, thinking everything they post down to what they're having for a snack is something the rest of the world really wants to know. But when they try to socialize in the real world, the skills aren't there, and they're more antisocial, anxious, and even paranoid. Physically, all that sitting around seems to be leaving them with problems sleeping, digesting, and even bouts of depression. I'm Michelle Morello. 1019 FM New Time is 333. Steven Tyler is crying and asking American Idol to show him the money after J-Lo is reportedly getting $20 million a year for the hit Fox show, which is twice the Aerosmith frontman's current salary. So now he wants a pay raise. A source tells the New York Post that Steven's halfway through his two-year deal and show execs say he's already tied into it. But Steven's management says he's just as popular as J-Lo. Apparently, show execs and producers love him. So I guess soon we'll find out how much they love him if they can reach a deal. I'm sure Paula Abdul is going to be barking mad about this one. Simon Cowell says Paula will be sitting next to him at the X Factor judges table because it's like owning a dog and the dog will only sit next to its master. If she's away from me, she pines, so she has to sit next to me. He is too much. I mean, Simon, I love him, but my God, sometimes he goes too far. Well, if he put a ring on it, but now your marriage is over, don't despair. A website is helping newly single ladies who want to clean house. The TheDivorceSale.com. It's a new service for women to get back on their feet financially. The founder says it's not just about financial freedom, but also about the emotional benefit you get from selling off your old stuff. Plus, if you're a bargain hunter like me, you can find designer duds on the cheap. Now, here's the best part. The first New York sale happening next month in Soho. So head to the website to sign up online or to get details on how to shop. 
1019 FM New Time is 335. You may have already placed your bets on how long Kim Kardashian's marriage will last, but with less than two weeks before her big day, Kimmy is trying to rival all other celebrity weddings, and she's succeeding. E! Online says the wedding so far, 250 per person, which is setting up to cost, get this, $20 million. I have to admit, this is kind of makes me nauseous. This is ridiculously excessive. Kim's sister, Chloe, says Kim won't match William and Kate's 70 million. I mean, that's a relief, but it'll be just like the royal wedding. I mean, who are we kidding here? Not to worry, though, you'll be able to watch The Big Day because E! is airing a two-part special in October, so get your DVRs ready. And at the rate this is going, clear some serious space to make room for all the glamour and luxury. I get my boxer shorts at Kmart in Cincinnati. We're not going back to Cincinnati, right? So don't even start with that. 400 Oak Street. I love that movie, don't you? Oscar and Emmy Award-winning actor Dustin Hoffman is 74 today. Can you believe that? He won Academy Awards for his roles in Rain Man and Kramer vs. Kramer and took an Emmy for his work in the TV movie Death of a Salesman. His other numerous credits include, of course, Tootsie, The Graduate, Meet the Fockers, and Hook, among many, many others. Happy birthday, Dustin. That's the latest news. I'm Elise Evans. 1019 FM New Time is 336. Time for your traffic and weather. 1019 FM traffic and weather on the fives. Well, we have troubles at the George Washington Bridge on the city-bound side. On the lower level, about a five-minute delay into the toll plaza, then very heavy across the span. That is because of an accident under the apartments. The left lane is currently out of service. Now, if you try the upper level, it's not bad into the toll plaza, but do not be fooled. We are looking at a real tough ride all the way across the span. A lot of folks are avoiding the lower level. So on the outbound side, though, you don't want the upper level. There's an accident mid-span. The right lane is out of service. So city-bound side, upstairs, slightly better. Going back to New Jersey, the lower level is what you want. Holland Tunnel, about 5 to 10 minutes on the uh, return trip to New Jersey. City-bound side, we're okay. Leaving the city at the Lincoln Tunnel, about a 5 to 10 minute backup. And city-bound, we're doing just fine. Now, getting to the outbound GW Bridge, do not want the New England throughway cross Bronx combination. Here's why your delays start in Westchester County in New Rochelle at exit 16 and we're bumper to bumper all the way down to the George Washington Bridge. The Bruckner Deacon combination, although it's not perfect, a lot better than the New England Thruway Cross Bronx combination. We're looking at delays from Grand Concourse up to the Cross Bronx Expressway. Manhattan, the Harlem River Drive northbound, heavy 140s to the George Washington Bridge, west side better than the east side heading uptown. In New Jersey, in Bergen County, 17 northbound on the slow side approaching Route 4 in Paramus, there's construction blocking the left lane, a very slow ride back towards 80 in Hackensack. 202, 206 southbound at 287 in Bridgewater. An accident still takes out the right lane. Northbound 287, a slow crawl into Bridgewater at exit 14 and more delays at the interchange with 78. In Westchester County, Saw Mill River Parkway southbound at Kisco Avenue. A broken down car takes out the right lane. 1019 FM weather, mostly cloudy tonight, overnight low 69, partly sunny tomorrow, chance of afternoon showers and storms, high 86, cloudy on Wednesday, chance of showers and storms again, high 86, sunny on Thursday and Friday, high both days in the low to mid 80s, 90 on the boardwalk in Point Pleasant Beach, 90 in Long Beach, and 80 at Jones Beach. Mike Barker, 1019 FM New. The following is a commercial message. So we're back, and we got some more music coming up in just a second, but first, this news just came in. Right now, the government and private banks... 9 FM New Time is 4 o'clock on WEMP, WEMP HD1 New York. I'm Sarah Lee Kessler. And I'm Daniela Bellotta. Here's what's happening right now. Panic on Wall Street. The Dow takes a major dive. If a gene could predict your risk for ovarian cancer, would you want to know? And what you pack in your kid's lunchbox, is it safe? 88 degrees under partly cloudy skies here in New York. Your 1019 FM New Weather Track forecast is just ahead. A disastrous day on Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average plunged more than 600 points, one of the worst days in years, at least two and a half. It's being called a panic reaction to the S&P downgrade of America's credit rating. But what does it mean to you? For one thing, rising credit card interest rates that might make you think twice before running out to buy clothes that you don't really need. On the phone, Stephen Wood, a market strategist with Russell Investments in New York. Steve, what exactly does this market plunge mean? Well, I think part of it's initiated by the S&P downgrade. And as you mentioned, that means that, you know, S&P's evaluation of the long-term debt of the U.S. Uh, is not as good as it has been. Uh, but also, 
uh, I think it's more of a statement on the political situation in the United States. It's more of a willingness of politicians to pay and keep budgets under control than it is the capacity. Because the United States, you know, the economy is big. Uh, longer term, we've got the ability uh, to have a strong economy and to pay out uh, our debt. So I think it's more of a political assessment, in my opinion, than an economic health assessment. And Steve, do you think tomorrow is going to be deja vu all over again? Or, or do you think that this is a one-shot thing where they basically have sent the politicians a message? Well, I, I think you, you're clearly seeing panic, but it's also global. I mean, this is not just the United States. Uh, the Europeans are in a much worse situation than the United States, so I'd rather be in the U.S. than abroad. So it's kind of a global issue, and I think the economies are slowing down. But ultimately what stock markets tend to do is they tend to overreact. They tend to get a little bit too excited or get to, uh, tend to get a little bit too nervous. So they overreact on the upside, but nobody seems to mind too much when they go up too much. Yeah, it's when they go down too much that people tend to take a lot of notice. Markets are very volatile, but longer term, you know, the, the U.S. is be doing okay, not great in the economy, and the companies in the United States are still making a lot of money. Stephen Wood, market strategist with Russell Investments in New York. Thanks for joining us. 1019 FM New Time 402. Dropside cribs are illegal, but you can still get your hands on one with just one click. They're still being sold on eBay and Craigslist. Now, after the new Consumer Product Safety Commission crib safety standard took effect this past June, eBay did agree to shut down its used crib auctions within a few weeks, but its filters are still letting a few dropside cribs through. As per Craigslist, while it's not really cooperating, unlike Toys R Us or Target, online marketplaces are harder for regulators to police. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says that the agency isn't raiding garage sales, but it wants to make buyers aware and let you know that there are safer cribs on the market. Of course, people always turn to these sites because the stuff on them is cheaper. If you knew it could stop you from getting cancer, would you have your ovaries taken out? 1019 FM New reporter Michelle Murillo explains that concept. That question well could be one you're facing when you get the results of a test that's in the works. It would tell if you have the RAD51D gene. Now, you don't have to care what the numbers and letters stand for, but what you need to know is if that gene's part of your genetic code. Studies show you're six times more likely to develop ovarian cancer than women who don't have it. It's actually a 1 in 11 chance. Tests to determine if a woman has the gene should be ready in a few years after that. Women may well find themselves confronted with the question of whether they have their ovaries removed to avoid the upped risk of developing cancer. I'm Michelle. Michelle Morello. 1019 FM New Time 404. So your kid comes home from daycare or school with a stomach ache, and you probably think they caught something, right? But it could be that lunch you packed. 109, 1019 FM New Reporter Mara Rubin explains. I know, I know, peanut butter and jelly with a side of baby carrots are not exciting, but they're safe. A turkey or ham sandwich, not so safe, and can make your kid sick if it doesn't stay cold enough, cooler than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Any warmer than that, and the increase of foodborne illness increases. And ice packs, they didn't help much. So parents, what should you pack? Products that are not egg or meat-based are going to be more likely to be safer than products that are egg and meat-based. J.D. Hansen of the Center for Food Safety also says fruits, vegetables, and whole grains are safe. I'm Mara Rubin. 45,000 Verizon workers have hit the picket lines in New Jersey. They're upset about management plans to cut benefits, but many parents are worried the cable might go out. No more Dora or Sesame Street or Thomas the Tank. Verizon says it's got the situation covered, more managers on duty, but it could be days before a co-worker gets to your house. 1019 FM New Time, 405. Time for traffic and weather. 1019 FM traffic and weather on the fives. While the hits just keep on coming at the George Washington Bridge on the way out of New Jersey into Manhattan. City down upper level, not bad into the toll plaza, but mid span, a broken down car carrier takes out the left lane. So everybody's zigzagging to avoid this truck broken down. Lower level, it's about a 10 to 15 minute delay into the toll plaza, then absolutely jammed onto the span. A brand new accident blocks the right lane right by the Jersey Tower. Leaving Manhattan, really not bad upstairs or down. Lincoln Tunnel leaving the city, Holland Tunnel leaving the city, both about 10 minutes. City bound, both tunnels are in good shape. 
Getting to the outbound GW Bridge this afternoon, very heavy on the west side highway, northbound 90s all the way to the George Washington Bridge. Over that right shoulder of yours, you're going to see Riverside Drive. You're going to notice that's moving a lot better than what you're sitting in on the west side highway. So get yourself over to Riverside Drive. That'll offer a lot more give than the west side highway will at this point. Harlem River Drive northbound. We are heavy 140s to the George Washington Bridge. Southbound Harlem River FDR Drive combination actually in pretty good shape end to end. In the Bronx, northbound Bruckner Expressway at the Bronx River Parkway. An accident blocks the right lane of travel. Southbound New England Thruway, westbound Cross Bronx combination delays start in New Rochelle in Westchester County. That's at 16 and go all the way down to the George Washington Bridge. In Queens, eastbound LIE, very slow Grand Central out to the Nassau County line. Grand Central Parkway eastbound heavy from the BQE to the Northern Boulevard area. More delays into the Kew Gardens interchange. A broken down car takes out the right lane. In New Jersey, 17 northbound bumper to bumper into Paramus at Route 4. There's left lane construction backing things up all the way to Route 80 in Hackensack. In Elizabeth, 1 and 9 northbound at North Avenue, there's an accident taking out the left lane. Stick with 27 or the turnpike heading northbound. Either either or the other will help you out. In Bridgewater, 202-206 southbound at 287, an accident still blocks the right lane. If you're on the parkway, the turnpike really not bad north or south. This report, a service of Subaru. 101.9 FM weather, mostly cloudy tonight. Comfortable, overnight low 69. Partly sunny tomorrow, chance of afternoon showers and thunderstorms, high 86. Cloudy skies on Wednesday, chance of showers and storms again, primarily in the afternoon, high of 86. And then you're going to really like the end of the week. Mostly sunny on Thursday, mostly sunny on Friday, high both days in the low to mid 80s with low humidity. 91 right now in Bradley Beach, 88 in City Island, 89 at Sunken Meadow State Park. Mike Barker, 101.9 FM News. Chocolate from Jacques Therese now. I love Jacques Therese. I love Jacques Therese because I love Jacques Therese because it's the best chocolate I've ever tasted. Ever tasted. Get your free chocolate from Jacques Therese now. Sign up at 1019fmnew.com. Some days I just need a special treat for myself, and that's what I give myself. Get your free chocolate from Jacques Therese now. I don't feel bad about eating their chocolate because it's worth it. It's good quality chocolate. Sign up at 1019fmnew.com. It's my little escape every single day. 1019 FM New Time 408. England's Prince Harry has his head in the clouds. The stratosphere, actually. The website Digital Spy says Harry wants to be the first royal in space and to train with NASA. He's an army pilot, so he's got that going for him. The website says Harry is also a secret Star Trek fan. Do your co-workers seem to be getting more rude? Workplace incivility is on the rise. That's insults and plain old bad manners. Researchers at the American Psychological Association say 75 to 80 percent of people have experienced disrespect from colleagues, and it's a growing problem. But they say they can't tell you exactly why, because they don't really know if someone actually means to be rude or if it's just off the cuff. One psychologist says, however, as companies lay off workers and increase workloads, the niceties will continue to suffer. 1019 FM New Time 409. Kate Gosselin is ready to start dating, put out a bulletin, but her eight kids are begging her to get married. Let's let's not date, let's just get married. The Kate Plus 8 star stopped by the Today Show this morning and gave an update on her love life. She says she's ready to start dating, but admits her lots of obstacles, like eight kids. <laughs> she also says her crazy work schedule doesn't help. Gosselin says she hopes the right person is out there. Somewhere. The Amy Winehouse Foundation has a home. Hers. Her parents have plans to turn the late singer's North London $4 million ten-room mansion into the headquarters for the charity they say will focus on causes that were close to the star's heart. The charity will reveal its official mission statement on September 14, which would have been Winehouse's 28th birthday. Soul Diva was found dead in her home last month. No cause has been determined yet. I'm a Glee fan. I don't mind admitting it. <laughs> and I was stunned Nothing to, hear, to be ashamed about. I'm not ashamed. I like those track suits, Coach Sue Sylvester. And I was stunned to hear that she's not going to be in that new Glee 3D movie. Hmm. Crazy move, I think, by the producers, right? Yeah, I wonder what the logic behind that is. Don't know. That's, That's the latest news. I'm Sarah Lee Kessler. And I'm Daniela Bellotta. 1019 FM New Time, 410.
say that as women age, they should make the change from powder makeup to cream and gel-based makeup. If you're starting to notice that your powder makeup gathers in those little lines and crevices under your eyes and around your laugh lines, it might be time for you to start to make the big transition. Now, most women only worry about switching from a powder foundation to a liquid one, but they don't realize that a powder blush can also add unnecessary years to your face if you're not careful. I recently tested out some of the cream blushes that are on the market to see if I could get that dewy, natural look that I absolutely love. And I can happily report that cream blush wins out over powder blush hands down. My favorite find is the cream blush by NARS in a shade called... You may want to earmuff the kids for this one, Orgasm. I asked a makeup artist and they all agreed that the Orgasm shade is flattering on almost every complexion and it gives you a wonderfully natural looking glow to your face. The best way to apply cream blush without ruining your foundation is to use your middle and ring fingers and tap it on all around your cheekbones until it's blended well. I also like to use a stippling brush because uh, it's a lot less messy. I'm Victoria and to hear more of my favorite finds, keep listening to 101.9 FM New. 101.9 New. WEMP. WEMP HD1. New York. 1019 FM News. Good afternoon. 1019 FM New Time is 5 o'clock on WEMP. WEMP HD1 New York. I'm Hillary Barsky. And I'm Catherine Smith. And here's what's happening right now. You thought Friday was deadly for your investments. The Dow lost another 635 points. A rally today against Hudson River toll increases. Jackie O once said she knew who was behind JFK's assassination. Chance of a thunderstorm tonight, 72 degrees. Tomorrow, a high of 86. It's 86 right now. Your 1019 FM new weather track forecast is just ahead. The Dow plunged over 600 points on the country. Today, it, as it continued to get very nervous over the downgrade of the country's credit rating, the president spoke out about the economy this afternoon. He seemed confident. He was talking at the White House. He says that he knows the country is going through very tough times and that people are worried about the future. Still, he says the United States always has been and always will be a triple A country. There will always be economic factors that we can't control. Earthquakes, spikes in oil prices, slowdowns in other parts of the world. But how we respond to those tests that's entirely up to us. All three major indexes plunged today. Wall Street has lost 14% of its value along with our 401ks over the past two weeks. But despite the economy being in the toilet, so to speak, you can ask for more money with your job. But a lot of people are doing just that. They're very confident in doing so. And to tell us how to do that, 101 FM new reporter Michelle Mur Murillo. Well, it's all about doing it right, because most of us are nervous about the idea of asking for more money right now with the unemployment rate high, high being so high and the ups and downs in the economy. But you have to pick the right time to do it. Now, today I spoke with career counselor Barbara Frankel, and she says that job performance appraisal time when everybody expects a raise, but we're not getting them anymore, is not the time to ask those kinds of questions. She says most often at that point, your boss has already thought through what the raise is going to be. So instead, she recommends a month or even more before those appraisal times to talk about a salary increase. Again, timing's everything. And don't just go in asking for a raise with nothing to back it up. Be ready to answer questions like why you deserve more money when your coworkers aren't getting it. And consider things other than cash. Stock options, which could be iffy, but also more vacation days and other similar benefits that can sometimes still be up for grabs. I don't know about you, but I would think it's rather unsettling with the stock market plunging 635 points. Uh -huh. Say, hi, excuse me. Um, I would can like I more. Yes. Well, oh, timing's everything. 1019 FM New Time is 503. New Jersey and New York commuters are upset at the notion that they could pay 50% more to get across the Hudson River. They're holding a protest as we speak this afternoon at Journal Square in Jersey City. 1019 FM New reporter Brianna Venozzi is on the scene with this live report. Dozen or more protesters with signs. They're shouting things like economic terrorism and saying no to fare increases. But they've attracted quite a crowd of spectators. One protester told me increases like this will turn Journal Square into a little Egypt. People living in Hudson County will be among the worst hit uh, if the increases go through. Most part in the city, many shop there. Looks like Jersey City Peace and the Jersey City Emergency 
Association are behind the rally, among other things. Pat fares will increase a dollar up to 275. They expect about 100 protesters to show up in the next hour. Among some of the other hot button issues here are the fact that unlimited passes will increase by 65 percent. That's about 35 dollars. In Journal Square, I'm Brianna Vinozzi. 1019 FM New Time 504. One of the two New York City cops cleared of raping a woman is going to jail. The judge who sentenced Officer Kenneth Moreno to one year in prison made it clear he didn't believe the ex cop's testimony that he was merely counseling the woman. He admitted that he held her while she was naked after he and his partner were dispatched to help the drunken woman out of a taxi. As Moreno's family cried, he was led away to prison. His partner, Franklin Mata, was postponed until Wednesday. The sentencing was postponed until Wednesday because his lawyer was representing another client currently on trial in Brooklyn. And she was in the, she was in the courtroom at, at the time, and she was sobbing uncontrollably. Yes. 1019 FM News Time is 5.05. Time for a check on traffic and weather. 1019 FM traffic and weather on the fives. Well, we have double trouble in Rockland County, unfortunately. On the southbound Palisades Parkway, just south of exit 12 in Pomona, it's a nasty crash. Left lane out of service, just the right lane squeezing by. Then there are no lanes in service further south at exit 10 in Nanuet. All lanes are knocked out right now because of a downed tree across the Palisades Parkway. So a real rough ride on the southbound Palisades Parkway through Rockland County. You can get around this by utilizing 9W or even the New York State Thruway. In West Westchester County in Irvington saw Mill River Parkway southbound at Cyrus Field Road. That's a crash taking out the right lane northbound, also a slow ride through that area. As we check your ride across the Hudson River Tappan Zee Bridge, it's not.